Yep, I'm live. I hope you're doing well today, and I hope, um, if you are in the U.S., that you're having a wonderful holiday. Although it's the weekend, happy 4th to, to our neighbors in the U.S. of A. Um, my, my, my task today is very interesting. When, uh, when I was watch when I was in church last week, um, online, uh, the, the preacher last week talked about her online dating, uh, st story, and as she talked about it, she said, um, I, he, she said something about dating through a computer and how she missed the touch of people and the physical presence of people. Yes. Um, and I sat back and I said, I agree with that to a point. Like, real intimacy, real touching, real holding, a real hug. Um, nothing can replace that. Um, but as I was thinking about that, the Lord began to say to me, um, it's not, he said to me, it's not about proximity. It's about vulnerability. He said, intimacy is not about proximity, but it's about vulnerability. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. Um, uh, just, just what he's told me um, uh, about real intimacy and what it is. Intimacy is basically into me see. So it's basically letting letting someone see into you. And when I say see into you, I mean the good good parts of you, the bad parts of you. Well, what you can consider it the bad parts of you, but what are, what are really parts that just need work, um, the scary parts of you, the dark parts of you, and it is, it is really hard to be truly intimate, uh, with someone, and I think when real intimacy happens, regardless of whether it happens online or in person, it is so powerful because what intimacy does is it bonds a person uh, to another person. And you could have a real intimacy um, uh, online. I know a lot of people say you can't, but I've gone in relationship, um, in relationships where it is so intimate. You share so much about yourself with this person. I, 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 I um, um, I had one of my best, I would say one of my best male friends, um, we met online, we've never met in person, but I was watching one of his videos on YouTube, and this is back in 2011 where, where YouTube actually had messaging, they don't do that anymore. But they actually had where YouTubers could message each other and whatever. So I was so touched by him, him, not only his music but his story. Because at that time, he he had an accident and he was um, he put a video up about his accident. 
accidents. And he also uh, put a video up about um, the song that he was doing called uh, uh, The Change. So I saw all these videos and I was so inspired by him that I messaged him and not expecting anything back um except yeah watch my videos and whatever um he messaged me back and it was so beautiful and there we started a really a really intense conversation and a really intense relationship now i don't hear much from him anymore but at that time i could i could feel intimacy starting to build between us and it became a really uh a fortifying really helpful relationship for me at that time and still is he's still i would say one of my good good friends closest friends and we've never even met but we we built intimacy through our words and um sometimes it's not the vehicle it's the heart of it so you could live with someone forever and then not see into you and you could know someone country the way and then be so close to you when you're speaking in the camera it feels like they're right there you're sharing and you're you're devouring your your whole self and it can be so close so i think intimacy is is important um i wouldn't say i would personally i wouldn't focus on the vehicle of intimacy i would focus on the heart of intimacy and i think to get there is real intimacy is scary because if you let people see your whole self there are parts of everyone that they don't want everyone to see and you don't need to be intimate with everyone but you need to be intimate with someone i'll say that again you don't need to be intimate with everyone but you need to be intimate with someone. You need to be that close with someone. Um, because what it does is it, it, it feeds you. Re- real intimacy feeds you. And it feeds your soul to have people in your life or people around you that know you inside and out that can give you feedback that can give you love that can give you support and that can kick your butt when you need it (laughs) um a lot of people are scared of real real intimacy and and that's the problem because we're talking a lot we're talking online we're talking sometimes to each other but we're only talking surface level stuff like how are you oh i'm good um but the lord wants us to get deeper first with him and then with each other and i was thinking about this the other day um how how we we say christianity is not a religion but it's a relationship and some of us think intimacy is with God is reading our Bibles uh, every day and worshiping on 
on said they were worshiping in our car and the Lord said yeah that's a part of intimacy but not the whole thing reading the word is really important and worshiping is important but what the Lord really wants is to know you is to see you naked in all all that you are all the good all the bad everything um and it's very it's very interesting to me i'm about to get very adult here for a second um it's very intimate um interesting to me that in order to create life human life um the part of you that nobody else sees you have to show to that person so the part of you that remains covered up to everyone else you have to you have to uh show to that person and join with that person in all in order to create light that's why um that's why um it is so important to to um be careful who you are intimate with because you are sexually intimate with because if you are if you are intimate if you are sexually intimate with the wrong person it causes all kinds of problems because um it leaves you in a state where you're just um after after the feel after it's over um you can feel empty because it's not real intimacy you didn't you didn't let them see into you you just let them use your body and and this is another thing too um that god showed me um sex is different than intimacy sex is different than intimacy sex is meant to add to intimacy it's not meant to be intimacy so if you're looking for intimate connection with someone and you think that physically having sex is going to give you intimate connection it's not intimate connection comes through communication and I believe that's why a lot of us are so lonely because we don't have intimate connection. We may have lots of sex, but we but we don't have intimate connection. And I'm going to say some, something very strange, but uh just follow me here. I believe this is just my opinion. We need to be intimate before we get married as single people but we do not need to be sexual before we get married um because what true intimacy does without the sexual component is it brings you closer to that person true intimacy and communication i mean past the service what surface level of what's your favorite movie what's your favorite song you can do all that stuff but at some point it needs to get past all that to the deeper level of who you are and if you have true intimacy where that person sees into you and sees all of you when you get married and you, you are you 
sexually join together. It the Lord said to me it's explosive because you already have that foundation of emotional intimacy, of spiritual intimacy, and you're adding the sex on top of that. And it it creates something very explosive. Um, but when you just have the sex without the intimacy, it, it feels good at the moment, but it doesn't leave you with anything. It only leaves, leaves you with a good feeling, good stuff. I can't say that on here because, you know, there could be other people watching. Uh, um, but it doesn't give what you crave. What people really crave, I believe, is connection. And real intimacy gives you connection. And I know it's scary, but it's so worth it. And what I was thinking of, too, going back to what I was saying, because I believe I went down a rabbit hole, is that real intimacy with God a real relationship with God is not just reading your Bible and singing worship songs on Sunday or whatever. That's all part of it. But real intimacy is getting getting naked with God, getting getting him to see who you really are and dropping all your clothes so he can really see who you really are. He can he can touch you in the spots that he needs to touch you. He can heal you in the spots where he needs to touch you, where he needs to heal you. But if you're if you're always covered up with clothes, with spiritual clothes or your armor that that even he can't get by He's not going to be able to create anything. And you remember, I said, in order to create things, you need to let pe let him see what you don't, what you cover up for everyone else. Like I said, with in the natural, so in the spiritual. Um, in order to create life, you need to have the other person see what you cover up with for everyone else. And so, and so that's how you'll create spiritual life, is by letting God see, and not only see, join uh, your spirit to his spirit to create new life, to create purpose, to create destiny. I wonder, I wonder if I'm just thinking to myself, if why you're lost and why you're looking for purpose is that you don't have that intimate relationship with God. You have a surface relationship with God. Like a, hi, how are you? I, I need this. I need help. You know, there are marriages like that, that you can just say, uh, hi, honey, I need the car fixed, or the kids are doing this, or whatever. But they're not intimate anymore. They're like just they're just totally not intimate anymore. They don't talk about anything but the kids. Or they could have sex, but no intimacy, you know. They don't talk anymore. Remember I said, intimacy is at first communication. And without communication, 
genuine communication, uh, deeper communication, there is no intimacy. And, and um, I believe sometimes in the church, we're dealing a lot with people that have like a surface level relationship with God. We say, would you like a relationship with Christ? And his answer would be, yes, but what kind? He's, he said, do you want a surface relationship? Hi, God, how are you? I'll, I'll sing a few great worship songs and, and like, just go listen to the preacher and write notes and go home on a Sunday and that's the and pray every day and read my Bible every day but I won't take my walls down he's like he's he's like okay you're like okay I'll do all the churchy stuff that I'm supposed to do I'll sing I'll praise I'll even do it through the week I'll even do it in my car but I won't take the walls down because I'm too afraid of you hurting me. I know the Bible says that you will not leave me nor forsake me, but other people have left me or forsaken me. So how do I know that that's true for me? And you know, we often as people have inner truths that we don't share with anyone else but it's what we secretly believe we we sometimes believe that i know myself um i sometimes believe that parts of the bible are not for me but they're for everyone else and if you ask me, I would say, yes, that's for me. But deep down, it's hard to receive that it's for me. It's hard to receive that he has grace for me. It's hard, hard to receive that he has blessings for me. Like, it's easier, when, when I read the Bible, it's easier to look at it as a blanket like just oh it's for everybody and i'm included but but the deeper revelation is no it is for everybody but you are special in it he's created you and this is not a blanket kind of book every promise in the word of god brothers and sisters, is for you. Every promise in the word of God is meant for you. And he wants that intimate relationship with you. He wants that communication with you. He doesn't want uh, the whole churchy thing or whatever, oh, we three scriptures a week or whatever you know he he just wants you to be you whoever you are he wants you to be you and if you need a bible reading plan to assist you or a worship song to assist you that's fine you could do it but let um but let it not um and Joe, just communication with God and you. Um, and I think, and I think over the years, we've done a disservice to people, um, telling them that they have to do things this way and they have to come to God before they, they have to get cleaned up before they come to God and they have to be perfect. No. He cleans you up. He makes you whole. He loves you so much. 
He loves you right now. He loves you the way you are, and he wants intimacy with you. And he wants you to have intimacy with others, too. Um, it's nice to love him. It's wonderful. It's all of life. But that's not all there is to life. And he puts people in our path for us to be, for, to see into us, to help us along the way. He doesn't put everyone in our path to do that, but he does put a select few people in our lives to that can deal, that we can be intimate with, that we can let see into us, that we can lean on when things get tough. He does. He does. Even even I found in my life, but most of the time, he he puts select people for seasons to help me deal with what I'm going through. So he might put one friend for one season, and that person, by divine appointment, may help me through that pro problem for that season. And that person may leave again. And then I may have no one steady in my life for a few months. And then he may put another person in my path to help me through something else that I'm going through in that season. So it's not always you have lifelong friends. Sometimes it is. Uh, some people have relationships like that. But he gives you what you need when he gives you what you need when you need it. Because he knows you. He knows what you need. He knows who you are. He knows he knows how to get your attention. And he just wants you to drop the religious facade and be and let him see into you. And he'll say he says right now, it's okay. He won't hurt you. A lot of people are afraid to be intimate with God and with other people because um, people have hurt them. And I'm here to tell you right now, intimacy is a risk, but it's the greatest risk you'll ever take in your life. Sometimes it will pay off, sometimes it won't. And when it does, it's the greatest risk you'll ever take in your life. And when it doesn't and you're hurt, it is still, in the long run, a good thing because that hurt will make you stronger. That hurt will teach you things. things. That hurt will make you discover things. And I know it's painful, but what's even more painful is closing yourself off. Pretending like you don't need anyone when you're craving love, you're craving intimacy, you're craving people to know you. And he's saying the first, the first, uh, he said, I want to know you first before you let anyone else know you. And I'll just say, I'll just say a word, word about dating before uh, I leave. Um, sometimes in dating, we get it all mixed up. We do uh, all this external stuff, and then we get married and don't know who we're actually married to. Where, where, when... When we are dating, 
uh, we need to be, we need to slow, we need to slowly become intimate with that person, let that person see into us. And then as we do that, we, we, we peel back the layers and, and find out who the true person is. Most of the time in dating, we're, we're our best selves. We're not our true selves. But the problem with, with that in marriage, you can't live with your best self. You have to live with your true self. You know, so the other person has to live with the true you. Uh, so, um, and another thing, intimacy usually comes slowly. Some people, in, in my life, I've learned that the best intimacy, the best way to let people see into you is to do it slowly is to not rush it. Like you don't tell everybody everything about you on the first date. You kind of um, tell them a bit and then uh, measure and see and tell them a bit more and you measure and see and they peel and together you peel back the the layers and intimacy is also mutual so so you're letting the person see into them you're letting the person see into you and they're letting you see into them and it creates a wonderful kind of balance if you're being intimate, intimate and they're not, it's a problem. Now, I know a lot of people are slower to intimacy, slower to letting you get to know them. And, and if that's an issue, um, I believe you need to talk about it in your relationship. And don't be afraid to ask the hard questions, too. So, guys, I will see you later. Thank you so much for listening to me and for supporting me through all, all these years. Thank you. Bye.